How you guys doing today? Welcome to the show. It's Friday. It's Friday. Yay! May the 26th, 2018. Welcome to Traveling with Bruce. I'm Bruce with Traveling with Bruce. It's right here it says so, Traveling with Bruce. One of my new shirts. Just got them yesterday. I'm so happy, so happy. Um, great to have you guys here today. I hope you're having a good day today, uh, getting ready for your weekend. Um, Traveling with Bruce, nine and a half months old. Unbelievable time flies when you're having fun. Um, we just broke, uh, looks like we're just zooming in on 2,000 uh, and what, 48 subscribers. I think we're on our way to 2,050 and beyond here today, we're probably within this telecast. Fantastic, 2,050 subs. Whoa, that's fantastic. Thank you everybody for joining in. Uh, I've been getting emails this morning from uh, Redbubble. Uh, people are picking up some items on Redbubble today. Fantastic. Again, thank you for your support and uh, <laughs> glad you like some of these items from the channel. Uh, we're trying to come up with logos and different looks all the time and just give you as much variety as humanly possible. If you want to grab a t-shirt or get yourself a couple of coffee mugs. I, I picked up four of them last night because uh, I need some mugs on my set here. Plus, you know, I want to drink out of my own mug, you know. Um, thing is that uh, you buy one coffee mug, it's regular price. You buy two, you get like 10% off. You buy four, I think you get 20 or 25% off the cost of four mugs because it's a volume deal. It doesn't have to be the same logo. You can just buy uh, four mugs and each one's a different logo. You still get the discount, the volume discount. So if you know someone that, uh, you know, you got some friends and family that you want to pick some items up for, uh, get a mug for yourself and uh, pick up three more for some gifts save yourself it's like getting one free i mean what's wrong with that whatever you need to do so hey i'm happy about that so anyway i, I ordered my mugs last night and uh first thing this morning i got an email they've been shipped i can't, can't believe it. it's like within 18 hours and most of those hours are in the middle of the night uh my mugs are made they're already shipped i've got a tracking number unbelievable so i should have them sometime next week Awesome sauce. I love that. So way to go, uh, Redbubble. Thank you for looking after me and uh, my uh, followers. Uh, I'm just just thrilled with how that's going. Uh, I, I can't possibly screw that up. That's the thing I love about it. I couldn't imagine having to make all these different items uh, <laughs> through some sourcing outfit here in town and then pick them up and then take them to the post office and do the labeling and the packing. I could, I, there's no way. There's just <laughs> so this is awesome stuff uh, knowing that when customers order product within 24 hours of the order being placed it's already usually made and shipped depending on weekends obviously i'm just blown away by that and my uh, my uh, folks out there who get the product they love what they see so great stuff the channel uh going along great um uh we're at 250 uh, videos now I've, I've posted like 250 odd videos unbelievable number uh, I was looking over some of the titles this morning. I was doing some some work this morning. I try to uh, about once a week. I try to kind of go through my videos for the last couple of weeks, and I make sure that they're all um, closed captioned. So I add that. Um, I was doing that this morning, and I realized, oh my gosh, it's been like uh, almost ten days. That doesn't sound like much if you only do one or two videos a day a week. I mean, you know, it might be three or four videos, but I do. I do eight live streams a week, uh, Monday to Friday, uh, 5 p.m., and then Tuesdays, Thursdays is 8 p.m., and Saturdays at 2. There's eight live streams, and then I throw in one or two or sometimes three regular videos. So I had 20 videos I had to uh, close caption this morning, and each one takes three to five minutes because I try to – double check the spelling and i look at my tag wording and my keywording any any way i can somehow in, engage the analytics better i do it <clears throat> but when you have to do 20 or so videos you know two hours later you get the job done and that's two hours gone uh, so fast unbelievable but we got that done today so i'm very pleased with uh, with that effort and uh, trying to keep up with pinterest and keep videos going there and then I try to post videos uh, on Facebook. Oh, by the way, uh, I've been noticing lately on YouTube, um, there's uh, like when I watch a, a video of mine or anyone else's, um, I have a uh, I have a box that shows up, I think on the top corner here for you guys. It's like an analytics box and it'll show uh, uh, the statistics of the channel that you're watching, either mine or whomever I'm watching. And uh, 
Uh, in there, it has uh, how many Facebook likes the video has or how many times it's been shared. Very interesting social media statistics beginning to show up on the YouTube channel. And I know that YouTube is putting an emphasis, a premium emphasis now on channels that can give YouTube uh, watch time, uh, longer duration watch time, uh, social media shares, um, views that come into the to YouTube from outside of YouTube, like uh, like uh, Twitter or, or Facebook or other media sites. So um, uh, for those of you out there who've been sharing my videos on Facebook, I can't thank you enough uh, how that really helps me. Uh, if I do it, it's kind of like in-house promotion, but if it's done outside of me, oh, that just scores brownie points with the analytics on YouTube. Just It just shows that the channel is, is branching out. And that means they'll promote videos even more. They'll promote my channel on search results and that type of thing. So whenever I get a thumbs up from you guys, whenever I get a comment on my uh, on the comment section of a video, uh, whether uh, you're sharing me on Facebook or uh, doing a, a mention of my channel, sh sh showing a link to my channel on Instagram, uh, anything on Twitter, uh, doing a retweet of mine or uh, sharing my uh, sharing a video I put on. Twitter to someone, you know, to, to the Twitter universe through your connections. All of that goes a ton of a way down the highway for me to um, legitimize my channel to the YouTube uh, computers that rule <laughs> the world <laughs> and decide which YouTube channels get more exposure and which don't. So uh, thank you, one and all, for that. I, I can't uh, thank you enough for that. And of course, uh, for those of you who send me contributions uh, as donations, thanks again, as always. I, as you know, I am so appreciative of that. Um, whether it's Super Chat here on my live streams, I uh, uh, appreciate that. But I uh, really appreciate it when I get a, um, a uh, donation to the channel through uh, PayPal. Uh, because PayPal uh, is instantaneous. Um, it's 93% of the funds come my way. By the time it's all said and done, by the time the, the fee comes off for, for the, the amount that comes in, plus for me to get it to Canada and convert it, I end up with 93% of the dough. That's really helpful. Um, whereas with with PayPal, uh, sorry, with uh, <laughs> YouTube, uh, Super Chat, I just get 70%. Uh, they take 30% off the top for their fees and for a profit margin, and I get 70% of the proceeds. So uh, if you're sending me five bucks, I either get 350, or I get uh, about 465. Big difference every time one of these comes through. And uh, for those of you who send me more than that every time, whew, it's lights out difference. It's dollars, dollars and dollars difference per pledge. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Jen, she thanks you. She loves the hot dogs at Costco. <laughs> I love the chicken bake. And then we can try and pay bills. So anyway, that's that's just great. All right, there you go. There's a little commercial and a little thank you for the channel. Uh, appreciating everything um, tomorrow Saturday I'll do a video tomorrow two o'clock uh, live stream and of course you're all invited to come by hopefully you'll, you can if you know someone that might enjoy it pop on in I may have some trivia tomorrow as well with any cruise ship news that comes along as far as cruise ship news uh, not too much today there's been a little bit uh, a little tidbits of news have come out uh, uh, officially the Coast Guard announced well, I think 24 hours ago they announced that they stopped looking for the latest passenger who either fell or jumped overboard from a cruise uh person i think was from greensboro north carolina and uh 50 year old male i think it was and uh, they tried for 24 hours to look and see and they found nothing and uh after 24 hours they don't look anymore because there's there's just no way that uh someone can survive in the uh, 50 something degree temperature north atlantic or mid-atlantic there uh, and the currents, um, it's just, it's, it's too debilitating. They, they just expire, unfortunately. Um, what else are they going to talk about? Uh, uh, oh, I heard today that the, uh, Norwegian bliss is in Los Angeles. It arrived in LA this morning. Um, it is the single, it is the largest cruise ship ever to visit the port of Los Angeles, set a record. And I guess the ship entered the harbor uh, through the breakwater, through, through, through the opening. And um, being that it's as long as it is, uh, it cannot uh, go into the harbor straight on and then turn around. 
it had to turn around in the open area of the harbor and back in to the pier in Los Angeles. And it is now parked right behind the, uh, the USS, is it the Iowa? A destroyer that's in Los Angeles on a permanent basis there. Um, and it, it basically parallel parked in behind the, uh, <laughs> the destroyer. <laughs> that is a museum piece. <clears throat> right at the world, the World Cruise Center in Los Angeles. Um, the area where Princess parks their cruise ships for cruises to uh, Mexico at that port, uh, they can come in straight in and park. They make the hard left-hand turn and go right into the pier, and the, the, the pier is right here on the port side of the ship. Um, but uh, the Bliss uh, apparently is so long that it cannot do that and then back out and come out. And so uh, it couldn't also turn around on a dime in the channel. It had to do that back at the harbor. So that's quite a logistical feat. I think it's about a mile to a mile and a half of distance to get back to the parking spot for the cruise ship. But the Bliss apparently will be back in two days. It's there at least tonight at 7 o'clock. It's just a day visit. Takes off at 7 tonight. Comes back day after tomorrow. And then after that, it uh, takes off for Seattle, and it's due for seven or eight more visits this year uh, in Los Angeles uh, before ultimately uh, heading for the Panama Canal and back to Miami for Caribbean cruises next year. So that's the latest on the Bliss. Our buddy uh, Jim Zim posted a video today about the Bliss, another one, and this one was riding the go-karts. So if you get a chance, you can check that video out. Uh, he's got a camera probably attached to his a GoPro attached to his helmet and he's hanging on. <laughs> you can watch him go around uh, navigating the uh, navigating the uh, go-kart. I noticed that he was talking about the, how much it costs. It's seven bucks to ride the uh, go-kart uh, on the uh, Bliss. And it sounds like you get about five laps. Uh, so you kind of come down, you're on, down below and you come up the ramp and now you're up on the top level and then you come back down the ramp and through the pit stop and then back up again. And I think you get to go around five times for seven bucks, something like that. Uh, looked like a lot of fun and I'm sure some of you are going to take advantage of it when you get the chance uh, on your first trip for the Bliss for sure. So that was the news on the Bliss today. Um, just trying to remember if there's anything else I caught up. There's a lot of little things uh, going on today. Nothing uh, Nothing like major happening. No news on the uh, Vision of the Seas from Royal Caribbean. It should be in uh, ba -ba -ba Barcelona tomorrow. I think today's a sea day from Malta. So it'll be there. Uh, this being now at 5 Eastern. So 11 o'clock. It'll be six, five, six hours from now. It should be pulling into Barcelona if it's on time. Um, the last we heard about the Vision of the Seas was, of course, it had a power outage uh, between Mykonos, Greece, and Santorini. And the ship went dead uh, for 10 minutes. So uh, all power was off. Only emergency lighting was on in the hallways. <clears throat> and uh, apparently the story goes that um, a software glitch caused a power outage. And it, it took uh, 10 minutes for the entire system to reboot itself and come back online. I'm sure that there are tech people. There are, uh, there are, uh, there are, uh, uh, software specialists waiting for that cruise ship <laughs> in Barcelona and they will uh, check all systems, I am certain. Um, and if necessary, they'll keep people on board that ship for the next few days to monitor it if that's necessary. But uh, so far, so good. No, no other reports of is issues, problems with the vision of the sea. So good stuff there. Happy to hear that. Um, uh, Ponant Cruising out of uh, France. Uh, they are known for um, sailing basically cruise ships that look like super yachts. Uh, they hold about, uh, I think, 200 odd passengers, if I recall. Um, they've just announced that their latest ship is, is undergoing sea trials and they're, um, they're going to be adding it to their fleet probably in the next month or so. Um, they've got a bunch of ships on order in this size range. Um, they like to do what's called exploratory cruising. Uh, that's what they term it. And so what they mean by that is they'll, they will go to ports that the big ships cannot go into. They will visit uh, uh, ports of call that uh, cruise lines generally would not uh, even consider. Because this ship uh, and these ships being uh, 400 feet long, not 1,100 feet long, and a much shallower depth underwater, they can get in much tighter ports and, uh, and go into uh, spots that big cruise ships just can't get to. Um, 
and uh, uh, they're expensive, but um, popular, uh, especially with the European crowd. Six star luxury all the way. So they're making progress there. All right, uh, today's topic that I wanna talk about was, um, if you're going on a cruise, thinking of going on a cruise, say three months from now, six months from now, a year from now, what should you consider pre-ordering and prepaying for before you get on the cruise? Uh, and the real reason I'm asking is to save money. Uh, what kind of discounts, like, what, you know, what can you save some serious money on if you pre-book now and pay now? Plus, what should you uh, pre-order? Uh, what should you pre-pay for and why? Um, let me know your thoughts on the different items here. I've got a bit of a list. We'll go over that in a bit. In the meantime, I'm going to say hi to the gang. Uh, <clears throat> if you're just new to the show, <clears throat> new to my channel, Welcome newbies. I uh, love having newbies come by. If you've never been on a cruise before, this channel's for you. If you've been on a bunch of cruises, this channel's definitely for you because we love talking about going on cruise ship vacations, comparing notes, talking about ships, deals, ports, a call, you name it. And uh, we like to compare notes. Also, we like to compare notes about weather. Uh, today, I'm in, of course, Creston, British Columbia, Canada. Uh, it's about 80 degrees out right now. Um, beautiful warm weather, a bit cloudy though. I think we're going to get some thunder shower later today. Um, but uh, I'm three miles north of the uh, Idaho border. Uh, Coeur d'Alene is two hours, 20 minutes south of my house. Uh, there's a Costco there my, that my wife, Jen, and I like to go to. Uh, and uh, it's quite nice here. So tell me, folks, if you're watching me and you've never been here before, sign in. Tell me, where are you? Where are you? Uh, what's your high temperature today? Uh, tell me, uh, tell me, uh, if you're going on a cruise uh, coming up, is there a cruise coming up in your future? Uh, what ship are you going on? Where are you going? Are you heading for Alaska? Are you heading for the Mediterranean? Uh, how long is your cruise going to be? Uh, if it's your first cruise, let us know. It's your first cruise. We'll try to give you any info you want. Any questions you have about cruising, fire away. Shoot them at us, and uh, we'll try to answer them on the spot. Uh, if I can't answer it, my gang here, I'm sure will. So far, we've already got 18 thumbs ups on this show. So thank you very much uh, for uh, thumbs ups. If you could spare one as the show goes on, fire one in there and help me on the analytics. That would be great. Thank you very much. I'm saying hi to the gang. Peter Heckema signed in at 310 this afternoon. Uh, 410, excuse me, 410 this afternoon. <laughs> 50 minutes before the show started. Peter saying hi, Bruce. I will, it was a beautiful day in Tarpon Springs today, about 90 degrees. Started to rain around 4 p.m. Uh, we're supposed to get between 7 and 10 inches of rain over the holiday weekend here in the area. Florida is getting too much of uh, uh, not a good thing. Too much rain, and we're talking sinkhole problems. We're talking logistics here, flooding. We don't need this, but it's happening, and that's too bad. Gregory Hartman is here too. Hey, Bruce, about the same here in Tampa, same kind of weather. Charles Jordan, hello, Bruce. Peter and Gregory, 78 now. Uh, and with on and off again rain all day with thunderstorms mixed in. So not great. Desi Wagner's here. Hey, Desi. Uh, hi, Bruce and all. 85 degrees in Chicago. Love that town. Um, the, at the Cubs game. So I just wanted to check in and say hi. Go Cubs. Fantastic. Uh, great to have you here, Desi. That's awesome. <laughs> Blaine Rayleigh. Hey, Blaine. Beautiful. 91 degrees on the Hilton Head in South Carolina. 91 and a bit of humidity, I'm sure. So you're wearing the shorts and you've got on a tee or a polo and you're staying cool, right? Stay in the shade, buddy. Uh, welcome back, sir. It's great to have you. Uh, Randy Lucas, uh, greetings, Bruce and all, and a rainy day here in Paradise, California. So even Paradise, California is getting rain today. Tracy Dunlop is here saying hi, Bruce and all. Was in the 80s, clear and sunny earlier in Naples. Now, since about 2 p.m., lots of rain. And, of course, on the day I <laughs> go out without an umbrella, the day I don't take it, it's coming down on me. But it's a warm rain. So, you know, <laughs> so one thing that my wife and daughter and I were uh, kind of pleased about uh, when we ended up uh, m moving from Calgary, Alberta, Canada to uh, Grand Cayman Islands, to the Cayman Islands. I was in offshore finance for a couple of years down there. Uh, and we moved down there in January of 1998, uh, the first week of January, and we left the house. It was a blizzard, and yet the plane was able to get off the ground. It took a while, but we got off. I think we were late three hours. They had to de-ice us. Um, but we were in the Caymans. I think it was that next week, uh, one day we had rain. Uh, and we found that uh, we didn't mind it uh, raining on us that much because it was a warm rain. We weren't used to that. Uh, the kind of rain you get in Calgary, um, now maybe in the dead of summer when it's 90 out, okay, it's a warm rain. But if it's raining in the springtime in Calgary or in the fall, it, it's a 35-degree temperature raindrop. <laughs> Those are just not fun. 
And uh, we hate rain in Calgary. We like the water, but we don't want to get it on us. But uh, having rain at 90 degree temperature, uh, it's a lot easier to take, but you just don't want too much. And I get you guys what you're talking to us about here. Richard C., happy Memorial Weekend to all our vets and family. Uh, yes, happy Memorial Day to all my American viewers, all Americans around the world. Uh, I will be on Monday, as usual, uh, with show. Um, for me here in Canada, I, I do six shows a week. So I'm on Saturday, I'm off Sunday, I'm back on Monday. And if you can catch me on Monday, fantastic. That'll be great. Uh, Debbie Manuel, hi, Bruce and everyone. Uh, raining and high of 60 today in Northern California. Ha uh, have to enjoy while we can, because uh, we'll be in the 90s by Tuesday. Yuck. Oh, it's getting warm up there. Awesome, Debbie. Uh, Wes Morrison, hi, Bruce, 97 here, New Braunfels, Texas, coming up to that 100 degree mark, uh, buddy. Gregory, uh, like the green, Bruce. Uh, yeah, not bad. Eh? Not nice. It's a nice color combination with this logo, isn't it? Um, uh, let's see here. Thomas Henry, hi, everybody. Just finished listening to last night's trivia. Great show, Bruce. <laughs> I put the folks to work last night. I think we were dealing with Harrison Ford movies, every movie he ever made. Uh, that was one of the questions, starting in 67, all the way up. After the show, people were commenting to me saying, boy, you, you make me feel old. You know, I realize how old I am when I realize when he made these movies. Uh, some of these movies are 20, 30 years ago, and I thought they were just made like a few years back. That's how current they seem to me. I hear you. I know that feeling. Unbelievable. Um, uh, Valerie F. is here, and Valerie says, hello, Bruce, from the allure of the seas. Valerie, this is great. Uh, where are you right now? Uh, where are you on your itinerary? Where were you? Where are you headed? How's your room? How's the food? How's everything? Let us know if you can. That's fantastic. Thomas Henry, 85 in Richmond, uh, Virginia. Thomas, welcome back, buddy. Paul Wilgus. Hi, Bruce and all. 82 and cloudy getting ready for rain here in Virginia. It's coming up the coast. Debbie Manuel, I prepay pretty much everything before my cruise, especially excursions and tips. Norman Duarte, 80 today. Hello from all in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Norman, how are you? Pamela Jordan. Hi, Pamela. Hi, Bruce. And everyone, welcome back. Elizabeth Breen is here today. We are looking at five days of rain here in the Daytona area. It's almost 90 today. Florida is getting hit with a lot of rain. I am sorry to hear it. Andy Jane 11. Hello, everyone. Low of seven Celsius. Uh, seven Celsius is going to put you at about uh, 40 degrees. Uh, and a uh, high of 12, if we're lucky here today, watching the reruns and laughing out loud, so much fun. <laughs> as usual. Fantastic, Andy Jane. I'm glad you just enjoy my shows. Uh, it's great having you, as always, from New Zealand. She's from way down there. That's fantastic. Thomas Henry, is Bruce on yet? Nothing here yet. I'm here. I'm here. Just check your phone. <laughs> refresh, refresh. Scott Batchley, hi everybody. Nice today in Ventura, 66 and breezy. Uh, that's cool. That's uh, easy to take. Paul Wilgus, yes, Thomas. Refresh, please refresh. Debbie Manuel, I don't have him on my screen either. We'll try and refresh. Please do. I'm I'm on my screen here on my phone, and I've got a screen going over here. I'm on the second screen. I'm up to 24 likes. So some folks are getting through, and uh, please come to, let those likes keep on coming in. Uh, let's see here what we have here. Uh, Richard, see this channel seems like a full-time job. I couldn't do it. Hats off to you. <laughs> this is a full-time job. <laughs> it's a full-time job, uh, but I enjoy it. And uh, I wear a lot of hats, so I've got to tell you, you know, a YouTube creator, a YouTube promoter, uh, e-tailer, I guess, um, and then the, doing the research and the trivia research and uh, promoting on Facebook, promoting on Instagram, promoting on Twitter, Pinterest, maintaining the uh, Patreon page. I got lots going on trying to make a living here, uh, but it's fun. I, 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 I like this gig. Elizabeth Breen, um, Scott Bratchy, I lived in Ventura on Montauk Drive around 2003. I really liked it. Uh, very interesting. Uh, Tracy Dunlop stopped at 7 Eleven today to get gas, and it was two dollars 98 cents a week ago. It was 2 52. Wow, 40 cents more. Uh, what's happening? Another reason to cruise instead of road trips this summer. I did notice today the price of oil dropped about two bucks a barrel. So, uh, give it a week or so, there might be a few pennies starting to come back a little by little by little. We'll see, but uh, yeah, it's gone up some significantly, hasn't it? Peter Heckema, we prepare nearly prepay nearly everything. Shows, excursions, and specialty dining. All the tickets for short excursions are in our cabin when we arrive, and everything else is on our cruise card. No waiting ever. Well, how about that? Well done. 
Wendy Thompson, whoa, Bruce, nice color on you. Hi, everyone. What a great day, 80-ish. Thanks, Wendy. I hope you, I'm glad you like it. Uh, Scott Bouchy, hi, Elizabeth. Still a nice place to live. Uh, to live. The light, the <laughs> place to live. Fire in December was insane, but we survived. Oh, okay. The, 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 okay. Uh, the nice place to live in Ventura. We had the fires, but it's still okay. Gotcha. Thanks, Scott. Uh, Debbie Manuel. Great shirt. Thanks, Debbie. <laughs> Peter Ankerbach. Tracy, our gas last week was 252. Today it was 289 here in Tarpon Springs. It's a holiday weekend. Yeah, that's right. That's one of those. Uh, that's one of those reasons it does that. Randy Lucas, we prepaid our tips, tours, and dining for the first time last cruise. I think we'll be doing that in the future too. Yeah, it just takes the uh, takes it right off the memory, not to worry about it. It's all done. Enjoy, Elizabeth Green. Glad to hear that uh, at Scott Batchley. Scott Batchley, hey Tracy, the gas here is almost four bucks. California prices, four dollars a gallon. Elizabeth Green, we prepay for what whatever we can, and then we still get a bill for drinks and the candy store and souvenirs. But, uh, but we expect it. At least a, a huge chunk of it is is already paid for. Richard C, you need to put your P.O. box so we can send you cash in the mail. <laughs> I'm reluctant to do that. I really am. Uh, I, although I had thought about it, I thought, well, you know, I could always put, I know some of the creators, I, I will say this, are YouTube creators that do include their name and addresses in the descriptions of their videos. And uh, some of them do get uh, items sent to them. Uh, and then they'll have like an opening, you know. Um, I, I can't think of anything you guys would send me. I, 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 I'm, I'm, would, I'm so appreciative that if you sent me cash, don't send me cash in the mail, please. No, use PayPal, please. Just use PayPal. <laughs> That's so much simpler. No border issues. No nada. Uh, that makes it a lot easier. And it doesn't go missing. It just arrives. You get an instant confirmation. You've sent it. I get an instant confirmation. I got it. And that's it. Uh, we can relax. Anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, but I was thinking the other day, well, you know, if you guys want to send me a Costco gift card, you could always do that, I suppose, in the mail. But then you got to get the stamp. You got to get the envelope. And what if it goes missing? And, you know, with a, with a PayPal donation, I can just go to Costco and spend it. And just, I'm good to go. Uh, whatever needs. Anyway, whatever. Uh, Scott Batchy, nice shirt, Bruce. Is that like a patch ironed on or? No, it's not ironed on. It is. Um, um, uh, I don't know how to describe it. I mean, as a, as a layman, it's not silk screened like the old days where they would put the shirt on the flat thing and then put the paint on and scrape it off. But it is, uh, there is a, a coating here. Uh, but note the color differential from here to here, just in the waterline. Notice how dark blue it is, light blue, and then almost white. You can't silk screen that. that you got to have solid colors. Where here, you can have transitions. So they're using some kind of a laser um, ap applicator of some kind. It's high tech stuff. And the shirt goes onto a flat board. Yeah. And then the computer measures the, you know, the location where this logo can go. And then it's just put on there and it has to be fast because they are shipping these shirts within 24 hours of getting the order. So there's no time for the shirt to quote dry on a hanger for a day and a half before they ship it because it was just silk screened with paint. Uh -uh. So this is, this is really quite amazing. And the other thing that, that blows me away is around the outside of these letters is white uh, border all around the outside of these letters. And it's just the finest, the finest of, uh, of uh, lines. And I can plain, plainly see it with my Coca-Cola reader glasses. Um, pretty cool stuff. I know that the logos that have been designed so far for this channel, uh, purposely are, are kind of basic. I, I haven't made anything really complex because that's not my shtick. Time will come eventually. There may come a time where the logos will become very complicated with all kinds of color saturation and everything else. But at this point, I wanted to bring out um, Traveling with Bruce t-shirts that kind of say it all. <laughs> this is a Traveling with Bruce t-shirt. And the hope I have is that you're wearing it and uh, you're on a cruise ship someday and someone walks by and goes i have one of those too i got one i got one at home i didn't bring it with me or uh you'll see someone uh at a shopping mall in florida or wherever you are and they have a traveling with bruce shirt a different one and then you guys can point at each other and go you watch that guy i watch that guy and then who who knows uh you just never know anyway fantastic uh iskew park hey bruce it's Iskew in Thunder Bay, Ontario. It's 16 degrees Celsius, plus 16, and partly cloudy here. Hi, fellow suburbs. Hey, Iskew, that's awesome. Uh, nice temperatures. You're getting warmer every day. Welcome back. 
Uh, Thomas Henry, yes, Scott, iron on. Uh, I don't think so. I don't think it's iron on. SQ Park, we prepay a bare minimum. Uh, uh, we pray we prepay bare minimum till as close to the trip as possible. You never know what events could jump up to either delay or cause you grief before you cruise. There you go. That's an interesting point. Uh, 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 Mr. X, I, I'm assuming this is a Mr. X from Tokyo. Uh, good morning. It is currently 20, but we'll end up with a high of 27 in Tokyo. Welcome back. Uh, great to have you here. If I'm wrong. If this is a Ms. X, please let me know. But if it's a Mr. X, I hope I'm right. Welcome back to the show uh, again. Cool Jazz is here. Hey, Cool Jazz, I think you're new. Uh, that's a great video too. Uh, 10 minutes for seven bucks. Uh, there you go. Thank you, Cool Jazz. That is the Jim Zim video about the uh, Bliss go-kart rides. Thank you for that, Cool Jazz. Uh, welcome to the show. If it's your first time here, welcome. If you've been here before and I've forgotten, I apologize. I'm old. It's all good. Uh, but I'm, I'm glad you're here. Debbie Manuel. Oh, bliss. Can't wait. Sea keeper. Hi, Bruce and everyone. Big rain here in Tequista, South Florida, 74 degrees Fahrenheit. Uncomfortable to stay outside. Tropical storm forecast for the weekend. Perfect weather to make vegetable soup. Thumbs up. Nice shirt. <laughs> <laughs> nice logo. Nice shirt. Uh, great viewer. Uh, thank you. Sea keeper. Uh, Scott Batchy, 120 days till I'm on the bliss. Uh, Mr. X, as for prepaying when I cruise, usually I don't prepay anything. Every few days I have to go to the front desk to pay off bits of the cruise. <laughs> but then I don't have to worry about being overcharged. And that, that's a good idea, too. If you're making sure whatever if you don't prepay, you want to be sure you're on top of your bill. You can do it at the front desk or you can do it out of your own room. Uh, most cruise ships now will have your bill posted on your television set. You can view it anytime you want, making sure everything's okay. Cool Jazz, just watched a bunch of ships sail out of a rainy Miami, right on, yeah, it is, so you're in Miami, fantastic, Cool Jazz, Scott Batchy, thanks Thomas, uh, Andy Jane, oh my god, do the kids have their own credit keys, because they will go crazy, and us, that's with the bliss and other things, you bet, um, uh, Mr. X, uh, and I also don't have to worry about it, about it if an excursion gets cancelled while on the trip, and then having to get my money back, so if you prepaid for an excursion and gets cancelled, you have to worry about getting it back, I hear you there. Uh, you know, these are these are points. But if the excursion is on sale, it's 20% off, 30% off, you might as well pre-book it and then worry about getting your dough back. You'll get your dough back. Uh, the, the cruise lines are very good about that. But once in a while, they need to be reminded, I suppose. Blaine Riley, uh, tips are a must. Absolutely right, Blaine. Nina Frank, hi, Bruce and all. So nice weather here. Was, uh, uh, so my son went with some friends for an evening swim. Wow, kids, kids today. That's fantastic, Nina. Out of Sweden, um, Richard C. I prepay the tips, photography fees. They have specials. Drinks to be delivered in cabin, tours. So when we get off the ship, we only have a thousand or two thousand bucks left to go, based on miscellaneous gaming and store purchases. I hate those big bills when we leave the ship. I don't want the big ones. Silo, Steve, hey Bruce, and all. Uh, Sixty-eight for the high and fifty-one for the low in Seattle. Overcast today. One hundred fifty-five days until the bliss uh, and my haven suite, H five penthouse, aka glorified studio. Fantastic silo. Um, laugh out loud, just looking at cruises to take no sh no stops to J in Jamaica. Uh, yeah, you don't want you, you probably don't want stops in Jamaica. <laughs> no, I don't think so, Steve. <laughs> Welcome back, buddy. It's great to have you, Scott Batchy. I, I like to prepay for as much as I can. Uh, very few charges to my onboard account, of course. The the uh, the go karts will show up on there, though. Yeah, they will. <laughs> Scott Batchy, anyone know about tax charges in port for the drink packages? Um, Here's the deal. I read this today uh, on the Carnival website, talking about uh, buying a, a cruise um, a drink pass, the Cheers package. I think they call it the Cheers drink package. And Carnival will pre-sell you um, a Cheers drink package, uh, either the uh, the uh, deluxe package, like with alcohol, you name it, coffee, pop, or just the pop package if you want. But the, excuse me, the alcohol package, the Cheers drink package, we'll call it. Um, Fifty-one ninety-five, I think they quoted per day per person. Um, but on ship, it's fifty-six ninety-five. And they were saying that if you do not buy the package before the cruise, in other words, I think it's forty-eight hours or before. If you haven't purchased the package, you can still buy it on board. However, you cannot buy the the drink package on board the ship. If it comes out of New York and another state, and I'm trying to wonder if it's trying to remember if it's Florida or not, you can't buy the drink package till the next morning at 6 a.m. Uh, because if you did, uh, you're technically buying the package from the 
jurisdiction of the state that the cruise ship was in. In other words, they have to charge you a state a state tax. And the cruise line doesn't want anything to do with New York state taxes or anybody else's state taxes to its passengers. So they don't allow a drink package to be purchased until 6 a.m. the next morning at sea. Found that interesting. Um, interesting. Uh, okay, drink packages. Uh, so if you're buying a drink on the cruise ship, while still docked in New York City, it's likely that if they are selling you alcohol on board the ship, you are paying a state tax and it's added into the price of the drink. They'll tell you about it. They'll mention it. Uh, it'll be there. Uh, that's my hunch too. Um, uh, Sylvia Swan is saying here, uh, asking here or saying here, hi, Bruce and everyone. Sylvia, Greensboro, North Carolina, 83 and sunny. Ordered on Redbubble, got the paperweight, so many choices. <laughs> That's great. Thank you so much. I did see your order today. Uh, so many to choose from, says Sylvia. Mary, hi, 81 cloudy and humid here in New Hampshire. Oh, man, the humidity is building up, Mary. Stay cool, stay in the shade, get the fans going. Uh, Maurice is here. Um, Maurice says, does anyone, uh, does anyone, if I can board the seaside at 10 a.m. or 11 a.m., even though it leaves at seven. That's, okay. Uh, does anyone know if I can board the seaside at 10? Maybe that's what you're asking. Or 11, even though it leaves. Yes. Um, generally, yes. Uh, if you get to the port. Okay. Let me, let me, let me rethink that. Okay. You get to the port at 10 a.m. in the morning. You're kind of early. Um, they may not allow you to board until 11, but they will probably allow you to do all your pre-boarding stuff already so you can check in uh you can check your baggage of course you can get your uh, room key card you can get everything done with your passport uh um you know anything you need to do on the pre-check and then you can go into the waiting lounge you can probably head over there they will likely have in the waiting area coffee tea water cookies uh juices that you can already enjoy and just chill out until they call you if you're there early, uh, chances are you'll get on early. You don't have to wait till four or five in the afternoon. They're not going to make you wait three or four hours. No, I don't think so. But if you get there at, say, one o'clock, you might not get on until two, depending on the flow of traffic. But if you get there at 10, you're likely to get on between 11 and 12. It's a question also of how fast are they getting passengers off the ship because they have to disembark before they, you know, before they really bring on the hordes to uh, embarkation. Uh, but disembarkation starts early. It could start as early as 7 a.m., 6 a.m., 7 a.m., 9 a.m., 10 a.m. So by 9, 10, 11, most passengers may already be off the ship, and then they'll still target your arrival time when it's appropriate. But you got to give them some leeway. Um, X, Dr. Uh, Mr. X, anyone here who travels alone, have you tried looking for a cruise buddy to split the cost of a cruise with? Cruise with? If so, where did you find them? I usually travel with my mom. But I was thinking of doing a cruise this summer around Japan, but there aren't any real solar rates. So I was thinking of finding a cruise buddy that would be the best idea. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I don't know how to, uh, I don't know where to send you specifically for something like this, uh, especially through Japan. This is really going to be difficult. Um, the question is, uh, you know, through the internet, uh, you know, is there, is there any kind of sites anywhere there? I, I really don't know. Um, checking the forums, I, I would go like maybe go to cruisecritic.com. And um, uh, take a look at um, uh, the forums. Look for the ship that you're going to want to sail on for the itinerary you want. There may be a, a discussion forum there already about your cruise. And in the forum, you may want to put a posting up there to say, hey, I'm a solo cruiser. Is anyone out there you know, looking to go on this cruise as a solo cruiser? And then maybe you'll get a response from someone there. I'm not sure how else to uh, to uh, tackle that one. Otherwise, you got to find a buddy. You definitely got to find a cruise buddy for sure. Um, Lane is saying 161 days until the Carnival Horizon from Miami. Uh, port of calls are Grand Turk, San Juan, St. Kitts, St. Martin. Should be good. Uh, 161 days and counting. Cool jazz uh, at uh, Mr. X. I think NCL offers solo cruising. They do, but it's at a premium price. Uh, Sylvia Swan. Sylvia only prepaid the gratuities. Afraid it might rain for excursions. There you have it. Yeah, that's another. That's a good thought too, isn't it? Uh, you you know you're you're on the you pre-booked your excursions months ago, 
uh, you're on the cruise ship, like right now, Miami, uh, the Caribbean. What if what if uh, your your ship is arriving in um, San Martin day after tomorrow, and it's it's a monsoon, it's just pouring, and you're supposed to go on some kind of zip ride. You're not going on a zip line. You might not get a refund. Uh, that might be an issue. So something to keep, something definitely to keep in mind. Definitely keep that in mind. Kathy Butler, we could send you postcards. Lots of people like to give gift cards. That's true. I got to think about that. Uh, Mr. X, uh, Cool Jazz, they don't appear to do it around Japan. The cost of going solo is the same or rarely almost the same as the cost of two people, unfortunately. Cool Jazz, what about a set of golf clubs? Laugh out loud. <laughs> you want to send me a set of clubs? Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> Silo Steve, hey, Debbie, look at the Port of LA live stream. You can see the bliss. There you go. Sea Keeper, if you had a P.O. box. I could mail you one of my cheesecakes, but Customs Canada would eat it before you got it. You got that right. As close as my mailbox is to that border, yeah, it's not getting across that border. Are you kidding me? <laughs> They're going to inspect it, taste test it, have another guy taste test it, one of the girls taste test it. There could be nothing left. <laughs> Michelle Lucas got a new uh, mailbox. Uh, get a new mailbox just for traveling with Bruce. I can only imagine what Mr. Bean the steamer and Mr. Lucas will be sending you. Oh man, look out, <laughs> Michelle! I love it. Uh, Richard, see Scott. Some ports will charge extra when you are in their waters. Local tax, uh, but you are notified before you go there in the daily paper, so you know to buy stuff in advance. So there you go, Anita Frank. Bruce, stick with the blue and white colors, uh, though it's nice. Green is not your color. Bruce, green is just not your color. Uh, Nina, Nina from Sweden is telling me what I should be wearing for colors, and green is just not my color. But I got blue here, Nina. There's a little bit of blue here, you know, a little reflection. I don't know. I'm trying, you know. I had to show off the different versions of shirts, you know. I, I'm working here. I'm waking. <laughs> Thomas Henry uh, is Seakeeper a Mr. or Ms.? Uh, that's a Mr. Uh, yeah, Thomas, that's a Mr. And uh, Seakeeper can make some grub. Uh, I'm getting the drift here. A sea keeper can cook. Uh, oh, yeah. Cool jazz. Thank you. Yes, a first timer, Bruce, and do love the show's first live show. Ah, great. Uh, cool jazz. I'm glad you're here. This, you've come to the right place. We love, as you can figure out, we love talking about cruising. Um, uh, Mr. X, laugh a lot. I am really Miz. Oh, okay, it's a Miz X. Okay, from now on, it's Miz X. Uh, I am really Miz, uh, but I don't care enough online to tell usually. All right, Miz X. Uh, from now on, it's Miz X. I don't want to screw this up. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. <laughs> uh, Scott Bunchy, I'm not old. I suffer from CRS. Uh, CRS? I'm not old. I just suffer from CRS. Uh, not, nothing coming to mind here. Uh, you'll have to help me on that one. <laughs> uh, Wendy Thompson, tours, if we want them, we pay early tips. Yes, we can give more or later if we want to. Yep, Tommy Eaton, hi, Bruce, and all. 81 in Jacksonville, Florida, we prepaid our gratuities prepaid our pictures and excursions in advance. Just got a refund for our excursion today. Oh, how about that? Yeah, yeah, couldn't go on it. Silo, uh, had to pay tax on drinks while in port at Miami, had a, a drink package too. Uh, it was on the NCL Jade, so five drinks before I left was port. The, what, the port was sticker shock. Don't stop me though. <laughs> FYI. <laughs> FYI to first timers, for your information, first timers. Yeah, if you're drinking in port, watch out. Uh, hang on, hold yourself back just a little bit. Tommy Eaton excursion was canceled, hence the refund. Right on, Tommy. Cool jazz. They might allow you on the ship like, like noon, just in time for lunch. Oh yeah, oh, oh for sure. Uh, the sooner they can get you on board, the better. Uh, you're spending money. The odds are, the sooner you're on that ship you can start charging stuff. You might go to the spa and book a spa treatment right away. You might book one for yourself and your travel companion. You might get a massage the day after tomorrow or whatever. And, and the ship wants you on board sooner rather than later to do that. You might go to a special restaurant at, at 11, 30, 12 o'clock. Get a nice meal. It might be a, a deal on a special restaurant, 20% off, 40% off on embarkation day. You might take them up on that deal. The ship wants that business. They don't want you on the board at four in the afternoon. They want you on board sooner. So if you get there early, earlier, you'll get on earlier. Uh, the chances are pretty good. Yeah. Uh, Ms. X on Disney, uh, you can't prepay before check-in. You can't prepay. Even then, it is more than 
it is more them charging your credit card that you put on file. So there aren't any discounts for prepaying Disney. Interesting, Disney. Uh, Debbie Manuel, uh, that shocked me as well, Silo. I uh, uh, did not notice till check tab online, uh, but it didn't kill me either. <laughs> Paying taxes on your drink. Mary, I usually only pay for tips. Uh, I don't spend a lot on the ship, maybe one or two drinks a day. Right on. Very good. And of course, you got the ports of call. If you got a port of call, like uh, say your Mazatlan, and you're there for the day. Um, I, I just think pick Mazel up because I just did that last year. Uh, you know, you can get a beer for two bucks in 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 Mazelon. You can get a Diet Coke for a buck and a half, buck sixty five cents. I mean, the prices are great. So you might do a few drinks on land and then back to the ship and have one or two, and that's it. You know, perfect. You've had six, seven drinks, but only one or two on the ship. Fine, very good. Um, don't need a, a pre, you know, a drink card for that, of course. Um, Nina Frank, I will redraw all prepaid. I will redraw all prepaid. Prepay, maybe? Uh, I like to choose myself who gets my tips. Oh, 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 I see. You like to tip yourself. You only like doing tipping yourself. I get it. Uh, the ones I think deserve it. It's ridiculous. Prepaying gratuities. They better start to pay their staff better. There you go. Okay, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I know that. That is a position you've kept from day one. Wendy Thompson, hey, Seakeeper, makes. Makes cheesecake, uh, make cheesecake just enjoy. <laughs> uh, Charles Jordan, so far we have our cruise, uh, all but $1, and the gratuities paid for. We'll be adding internet also before I pay uh, that at least, at last, okay? Uh, Mary, Facebook has a few solo cruiser pages. Facebook does. They're always posting good deals on solo cruises. Interesting. Um, Nina Frank smiling. Debbie Manuel, silo, what? Uh, got to check that out. Thanks. Got 36 days till I see her in person and I can wave to you. Yeah. Check it out at the Port of LA. Uh, cool jazz. CRS can't remember poop. <laughs> Thank you. Cool jazz. Thank you. <laughs> Kathy Butler can't remember poop. Same thing. Uh, Kathy, we all know what it is because we have it too. Uh, laughing out loud. Nina Frank, Mary, name a few, please. Uh, Scott Batch, can't remember stuff. <laughs> can't remember stuff. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Wendy Thompson, it's green. Uh, he can wear it on St. Patrick's Patty's Day. There you go. It's green. You got a St. Patty's Day shirt. Thank you, Ms. X. And I'm off, heading off to Disney Sea. Uh, have a good rest of your day, everyone. Thanks, Ms. X, for popping by out of Tokyo, Japan. Always great to have you. And uh, good luck with finding a solo cruise partner. Hopefully that'll come together. Uh, we Time will tell. We shall see. All righty. Um, yeah, on the pre on the pre booking uh, and pre paying, I came up with a couple of uh, things that I thought I'd mention <clears throat> to save money. All right, to save money, you want to pre book a uh, drink package. If you're going to get a drink package anyway, uh, for example, Carnival fifty six ninety five uh, on their website per day. Well, how about fifty one ninety five? It's five bucks less. A seven day cruise. For two people, you're saving 10 bucks a day at 70 bucks. That's an entire one and a half, almost one and a half days of drink package paid for by buying in advance. So instead of paying for 14 days, you're paying for 12 and a half, something like that. It all makes sense that way. Um, but then again, you have to determine whether or not a drink package is for you, whether it makes sense or not, uh, whether you can keep up with the uh, pace that you need to keep up on. I did notice on the Cheers package, they included specialty coffees in that deal. They included soft drinks in that deal. They didn't include freshly squeezed orange juice, though. That was still a separate charge. It did not include room service drinks, uh, nothing like that. So you had to be on deck. Uh, but you know what? Uh, you want to retire to your room and watch a movie, uh, the two of you? Uh, and it's 7 in the evening or whatever the time is, 6 o'clock. You've had dinner. You want to go to the room? Stop off at, a, at one of the bars on the way to your room. Find out the closest one. You'll know. Grab a glass of wine on your drink card and carry your glass of wine to your cabin and enjoy. Or whether it's a beer or whether it's a, uh, a rum and coke or a Caesar or whatever you want, get to the, go to the bar and get it. And then, of course, uh, when it's intermission time for the movie, uh, you know, time for a little pee break, uh, pause the show. Uh, one of you gets to go to the bathroom. The other one has to go to the bar. <laughs> or you both have to go to the bar, I guess. You'll both have to go in some kind of rotation basis. Okay, you go to the bathroom first. I'll go to the bar. I'll come back. You go to you know, whatever. 
get yourselves a second drink, bring it back to your cabin, and then watch the rest of your movie. There's ways around this, folks. Uh, you can make the drink package work for you if that's what you've done, if that's what you fit, purchased um, uh, on the cruise. I did notice that the prices per drink, um, I was looking at that. Again, I'm not a, I'm not a, I don't drink alcohol very, very infrequently. So I don't know the prices off the top of my head, but I looked at the, the, the website for Carnival and they were showing, uh, you know, beer between five and eight bucks a bottle, depending on the brand and uh, drinks were six to 10 bucks a drink, uh, wine, five ninety five to $12 a glass, depending on the brand. All of those were included in the cost of your cruise in the drink package, I should say, the Cheers drink package. So uh, $51 a day plus the gratuity, which you're going to pay no matter what. Uh, you buy them individually, you pay gratuity. Buy this deal, you'll pay gratuity. So for $52 a day, if you're going to use an average of 5 or $6 a, a, a beverage for generally alcoholic, well, uh, now you know the number. But if you're going to buy maybe a, a latte in the morning and an Americano in the afternoon, a cappuccino, uh, and you're going to have a glass of wine after dinner, and you're going to have a glass of wine with dinner, and you're going to have two or three drinks during the afternoon, you do the math, maybe it's the same, maybe you're a little bit ahead, maybe you're just a tad behind, but it's all pre-done, it's all pre-booked, and you can get one whenever you want. There's that convenience factor, and it includes pop, uh, sodas, uh, unlimited sodas. You can get anytime you want another one, so there's that. Um, maybe it makes sense, but again, it's up to you, the individual. So you may order this as a pre-order because it's $5 a day, Per person cheaper, that's 10 bucks a day less for the same drink package you're going to get on board anyway. You may want to prepay it. Um, specialty dining. Now, that's something I think that's going to become more common for us. The so-called pre-purchase of a, of a specialty dining package. I think that's something that's coming our way as a common thing like a drink package. Uh, as more and more cruise ships have more and more variety on board for eating venues, I can see them coming up with a three specialty dining package deal, a five a package deal, a seven. Uh, so if you have a seven day cruise, you might have a five specialty dining package offer for a set flat rate. Um, it might be worth your while, it might not. It depends on the cruise line, the selection of restaurants and your, uh, your uh, appetite and wants, needs and desires. If you're not a crazy if you're not crazy for uh, the steakhouse because you, you're not a meat eater, you're vegetarian, why do you need to go to the $80 steakhouse uh, to eat a non-meat non steak? Makes no sense. Uh, but if you are a, a lover of a steak um, and you can go to the steakhouse, say, twice in that uh, five specialty restaurant deal, you can go to the steakhouse at least twice. Uh, and the entire package is 200 bucks, And you know that two visits to the steakhouse is 80 bucks a shot. It's $160. Uh, you're only spending 40 bucks for the other three meals. Uh, at 20, 30 bucks a meal, you're ahead. As long as you don't get seasick uh, and you know lose your appetite, you're good to go. That's another chance you have to take with these packages uh, for drink packages and dining packages. Because if you're ill, you're not going to be drinking as much. If you're ill, you're not going to be eating as much. But all in all, um, it might be worth your while to uh, take advantage of it, especially if there's a discount. If that Dining package is normally $200, but they're offering it to you for $160. You might take that deal for five restaurants. Might be worth your while. Um, what else do we have? Shore excursions. Yes, shore excursions. I can see one reason for bu buying a prepaid shore excursion is for the most popular excursions. You don't want to get caught where you get on board, you go to the booking desk for excursions, and that excursion you wanted in Jamaica or in San Martin or, uh, you know, uh, in Puerto Rico sold out. You don't want to see that. You don't want to, you don't want to miss it because you should have booked it. So you might want to pre-book it, take your chances that it's going to happen. And if it's not going to happen, well, then you'll, you'll uh, put your claim in for a refund for that, uh, for that uh, excursion. Uh, as far as saving money goes, sometimes you get the offers for excursions. So you may want to take a look at it and uh, see if it's worth your while. Um, Early boarding passes, the the the, pa the, the one that the Carnival has, the uh, fun to the, what is it, the, the fast pass, the pass to the fun pass, whatever that's called, the early embarkation and early de-embarkation and the early uh, getting on to tenders, 
Uh, I know for some of my viewers, it's a big deal. It is a big deal, especially with children, to be able to not have to wait in line for an hour in a hallway on board a ship to get onto a tender to get off the ship. It's a big deal to be able to just go to that VIP line and get straight on there because those kids will only give you five minutes of wait time and then they're out of control. So um, I can see that making sense for folks. And if the pass is on sale uh, prior to the cruise, as opposed to when you're on the cruise, then that definitely makes a lot of sense if you're into that. The internet package. Yes, the internet package. If you want to use your smartphone, your tablet, a laptop, you're a YouTuber, and you want to make YouTube videos on board a ship, you may want to have a prepaid uh, internet package. Absolutely. Uh, if it's on sale, yes. And if it covers one, one, one uh, electronic item or two or three, good. Uh, then you decide which, how many you want to activate and you're on your way. I, I think that's an excellent buy, an excellent idea to uh, to really uh, to really consider. Um, let's see here. Uh, uh, other other comments so would be the photo packages. The photo packages. Now, Carnival learned a bit of a lesson a month ago. They came out with an announcement that they were offering prepaid photographic services at a really good deal um, uh, for several packages, and I guess they sold so well. With a number of cruises going forward, they had to stop it. They 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 first they upped the price to try to stop it, and that made everybody mad. So then they dropped the price back down, and then they limited to how many they could offer. <laughs> uh, for some folks, a photo package is very very important. Uh, I can see where if it's a family reunion, an anniversary cruise, um, a wedding package perhaps, but then those are separate anyway. Uh, but if you're part of the wedding party. And you can book a photo package for you and your wife and, and, and uh, another couple that you're traveling with. That maybe your your maids of honor, best men, you know, uh, brides, grooms, and so on. Uh, the four of you will get, uh, you know, you one of one of you will get a photo package, and and you'll do a bunch of photos with the four of you separate from the wedding party. Makes sense. It all depends on on you know what your needs are. It might be the last trip that grandma is ever going to take, uh, and the whole family is together on this uh, family multi generational cruise. You want to have a photo package? Darn right! Uh, you'll get some uh, some good rates. Pre-book that before you get on the ship. Probably save a lot of money. Uh, the gratuity factor: you don't save any money pre-paying gratuities. You just get it out of the way. If you're if you're like me and you feel that thirteen bucks, fourteen bucks a day per person for a flat gratuity charge is the way to go, it's it's a one-time deal. It covers everybody. And if I want to tip anyone else. Separately, I can do that all I want. I don't mind prepaying the gratuities. Get it out of the way. It's on already on my credit card months ago, and uh, I'm now on the ship, and I don't have to worry about that gratuity thing. Yes. Will I save money? No. Uh, convenience? Eh, kind of. But then again, you know, uh, if I didn't prepay it, and any other room charges I get anyway will show up on my bill, my room bill, and I can walk off the ship. Uh, uh, the, the next morning and not even go to the front desk, it'll just be charged to my account. It's automatically charged to my credit card and I'm done. Now, if I want to, and I will double check the bill to make sure that all the charges are correct and I haven't been double charged for anything, I have an issue, I'll go to the front desk. If I want to go to the front desk the uh, night before uh, disembarkation and handle the bill there, I can do that too. They're more than happy to accommodate me and I can pay that bill off at that time, including the gratuities, fine away you go so that's all good all right let's see who else is here uh who else is making comments um <laughs> crs uh i can't remember stuff uh here we go um um and richard c is saying nina they should just raise the cruise price by like 20 percent and say tips are optional so all people get paid properly like the bus boys people who clean the bathrooms work in engine rooms yeah they they did that uh if all cruise lines got together and simultaneously change their marketing on the same day, for the same in the same way, and then you are looking at not not you, but an individual thinking about going on a cruise was looking at that uh, advertisement a week later, showing the seven day cruise on the uh, Carnival Horizon, and it's a balcony cruise and it's all inclusive and it shows at a thousand fifty dollars. 
the internet's going to go awful quiet over at the carnival offices because uh, people are going to go a thousand bucks. Oh man, I can get a hotel for seventy bucks a night. I can go to we can go to Vegas and get a hotel for fifty bucks a night. Then uh, why don't you just go to Vegas instead? Yeah, these cruise lines aren't going to do that. They're going to show these prices at four fifty four. <laughs> 432 for a week and then they'll have the add-ons because we're used to it we're used to it we don't like it but we're used to it and we've come to accept it as just part of the cruise nature the nature of the cruise business airlines get away with it uh southwest airline has a big old billboard you're driving to work every day and you get up there and says you want to get away 49 dollars one way haul, uh, flight oh yeah yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go, go, go try, try to get that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. It's three three stops or one stop and uh, extra fees. And you see the same thing with Spirit Airlines. You know, thirty nine dollars for a flight. Yeah, it's it's a hundred five bucks. By the time you add it all, it's there are no deals. Or it's it's a thirty eight dollar flight, but it's based on round trip. So multiply by two, add your baggage, add your seating fee, add your the, 150 bucks. I mean, come on. We're, we know what's going on here. Uh, it's just the way it is. What could I say? Um, <laughs> uh, uh, yes. Yes. I'm sorry to say that that is not going to happen. I don't think so. I don't think it's going to happen. Cool jazz. Bruce, when was your first cruise? Bruce, when was your first cruise? Um, the first time I was on an ocean liner, I was five. And then I was seven or I was... I was four and seven, I think it was, uh, to Germany and back. And then my first cruise on a cruise ship was Oosterdam, Holland, America, Oosterdam, March 2008. Loved it. One week cruise down the Mexican Riviera. Fantastic. San Diego to uh, Cabo, Mazatlan, Puerto Varda, back to San Diego. Loved that cruise. Loved that ship. Maurice, how is the seaside? Did they fix the problems? Uh, Maurice, uh, we've been hearing very little from the seaside lately. Probably for good reason. Um, probably because most problems are not near as bad as they were. But also, it is the summertime now where we may or may not hear very much uh, from the ship. I don't know. I do know that the prices are still relatively cheap and that they've turned the seaside into a, uh, a kind of a, I don't want to say booze cruise, but they've included a drink package with all the fares. So you can get a balcony instead of for 400 and 80 bucks or 520 bucks for a balcony. You can now get a balcony for say 630, 670 for the for, for per person um, for the week. Uh, that includes a drink package for each adult on the ship. Uh, so they've upped the price, but they've upped the the offer because I take a, I take it that a typical drink package on Seaside was upwards of 80 bucks a person per day. So if it's a 640 dollar cruise now, it's still 560 plus the drink package. Um, and so I'm not hearing as much because maybe the drink package is having the effect of uh, keeping the complaints down. <laughs> People are too buzzed to notice the order. Don't know. I'm just, I don't know. Uh, we'll see. Maurice, how is the vision of the seas doing? Did they find out why the ship lost power? Yeah, Maurice, we talked about that at the beginning of the show. Uh, software glitch seems to have been the issue. It took 10 minutes for the computer systems to reboot and the ship is up and running. So far, we've heard nothing more about it uh so so far we're thinking this might be it it'll be in barcelona tonight in the next five six hours it'll be in barcelona they'll be looking at it there uh, mary nina i join solo and single cruisers very good cool jazz is anyone booked for the celebrity edge uh good question maurice i am uh maurice uh, i'm going in january uh mary solo cruisers usa cool jazz on the maiden trip uh maurice Wendy Thompson, we buy a bottle of rum and get the soda card, then mix our own drinks. There you go, Wendy. Cool jazz. I told a friend a few months ago, cruise lines were eventually going to do away with free dining, too many specialty restaurants, and the food was getting lousy. Uh, cool jazz. Uh, that is, is there always a possibility that they may go to a class type system eventually? They may well have a scenario where if you're an inside passenger, an ocean view passenger, that uh, only the buffet is included. And then they may go to standard balcony, uh, which would, would which we would have called in the old days uh, second class or third class. Uh, they'll go to a balcony standard, and that'll include uh, the buffet and the dining room. But you got to show your room key, and it might include one or two other restaurants. And then they may go to the first class level, which is the Haven 
on Norwegian or the suites, uh, the Yacht Club on MSC. And up that level, they may offer you uh, all dining except for two restaurants, you know, maybe the bistro French restaurant and the steakhouse where everything else is included. They may go to that someday. You never know. Uh, we'll have to see how this plays out. Um, uh, any way to make money. Absolutely. Mary, when do you, when you do a drink package, you should look and see how many sea days you will have. My last cruise, we only had two sea days. I would have to be drunk the whole time on the ship, laugh out loud. Yeah, if you've got short excursions, don't bother with a drink package. Drink on shore, way cheaper. Absolutely. Debbie Manuel, faster to the fun for Carnival. Thank you, Debbie. Maurice, I don't think so. <laughs> Cam Wilson, hey, everybody. Cam Wilson, I see the word Carnival. What's going on? <clears throat> Debbie Manuel, hi, Cam. Maurice, does anyone know why they call pilots on airplanes captain towards the end of the flight? I, I, I don't know. I thought they always called him Captain. Uh, Captain Wilson. Hola, Debbie. Cool jazz. Guess he's in charge, Maurice. Uh, sea Keeper, I enjoy having a glam pick of myself taken on formal nights. Right on. Cool jazz. Gone are the days of 199 bucks for three nights to the Bahamas. Um, yeah, I, I'm not sure. If there still might be some of those. Uh, but I did notice, and uh, we said earlier this week, the uh, Mar Mariner of the Seas. Royal Caribbean ship, 1,000-foot-long ship with an ice skating rink being completely refurbished in, uh, is it Barcelona right now? Okay, no, Cadiz. Cadiz, Spain right now. That ship is going to be uh, three and four nights out of Miami to the Bahamas. And uh, it wouldn't surprise me if you can get a $200, $250 cruise on that ship on some of the inside rooms. Uh, it might be three, three fifty dollars for a balcony. Um I'll be looking into that. I would keep an eye on the cruise prices for Marin of the Seas starting after this June. There might be some bargains there. Cool jazz. Ryanair charges to use the bathroom. How about that? Suzanne Hoffman. Ooh, you have some big spenders here. I'm thinking that I must be the only budget cruiser here. Now, I'm a budget cruiser too. <laughs> Seakeeper is a budget cruiser. There's a bunch of us that are budget cruisers. Um, but yeah, there's some folks who spend. Uh, cool jazz. Uh, first cruise, 1994 on the Carnival Holiday. Just went to the breakers, I think. Uh, my, Andy Jane, gosh, no, Suzanne, you not alone. Oh, gosh, no, Suzanne, you not alone. Auntie Jane, hola, Cam. Uh, <laughs> Nina Frank, uh, thank you, Mary. Tina Frank, no, Suzanne, you are not alone. There's a bunch of us, Suzanne. Uh, Maurice Ingram, did you hear about the crew member aboard the seaside that went overboard? Yeah, we did. Couldn't find him. The thinking was that he jumped on purpose. Um, uh, they uh, did not have, apparently there was no uh, sounder on him the the cruise members all have a, a lanyard or something attached to their clothing that has a chip in it that sounds a distress signal if they fall over overboard there wasn't one they didn't there wasn't one on this one now, i don't know if they found it on the ship uh you know in his in his crew in his uh cabin um haven't heard a word uh there's that this kind of stuff gets zero press if the cruise line can at all at all pull it off. If they can pull off that there will be no information shared with the public about anyone jumping overboard, falling overboard, uh, cruise member or not, uh, you know, passenger crew member, they like to just clam up and say nothing because that is just not a way to sell cruises. Uh, they don't want to go in there and they just avoid the topic at, at all costs. And that's what's what happens. How are we doing for thumbs ups right now? 30 thumbs ups. Thank you guys. I uh, appreciate that very much. Anyone wants to give me a thumbs ups today? I would appreciate it. Uh, they help with the algorithms. Thank you so much. Thanks again for all you guys picking up merchandise on my store. Uh, this is fantastic. Uh, I put a link in my description below on every video I've done now for the last couple of weeks with the link to the store. Uh, there's also the link on the top corner, of course. Uh, I've also put my email on all uh, descriptions below for the last couple of weeks. I'll be doing that going forward. So if any one of you want to send me a private email, you can do so. I have not put my address down there. I, I don't know if I should. Uh, if there's enough requests, I'll do it. But I have not put my mailing address down below. But uh, look, if you guys want to send me something, I'd love it. Uh, send me an email. Tell me you want to send me something. I'll send you my address, my my home address, and you can uh, you can always put something in the mail if you want. But uh, it's uh, totally your call. Uh, set of golf clubs. I, I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> I'd hate to pay the duty on that. Oh, my goodness. Anyway, there you go. I'm on again tomorrow at 2 o'clock in the afternoon Eastern time for my Saturday show. I'll probably have some trivia for you guys uh, if you're interested um, and whatever cruise news is going on. And happy to answer any questions you have about going on a cruise. 
in the meantime, I've had a great time today. I hope you've enjoyed the show. Uh, I think it went well. Nina Frank, got to get the pink one with the porthole. So nice. Out the pink shirt with the portal. Yeah, nice. Those those look great. Um, Debbie saying uh, bye. We'll see you tomorrow, Bruce. Uh, Auntie Jane, bye, Pam and all. The shirt does look good, and it is uh, quality also, Bruce. Looking sharp. Bye, all. Thanks, Auntie Jane. Great to have you. Great to have you here, Pamela, Nina, uh, Maurice. Uh, uh, we've had uh, cool jazz here. Thanks for popping by for the first time ever. Suzanne Hoffman was here. Thank you, Suzanne. Seakeeper was here today. Cam Wilson. Maurice was here. Debbie, of course. Uh, Mary was here. Uh, who else was here today? All kinds of folks popped by. G uh, Richard C., uh, Ms. X from Tokyo, Wendy Thompson, Scott Batchley, uh, Blaine Rayleigh, new subscriber. Welcome to the channel. Kathy Butler, as always, one of my favorites, was here today as well. Charles Jordan was here. Wendy Thompson. Uh, Tommy Eaton was here. Silo was here today. Uh, Scott Batchley, of course, if I haven't mentioned him already. Michelle Lucas was here. That meant, means Randy wasn't too far, too far away either. Uh, fantastic. Sylvia was here. Um, let's see here. <laughs> going back, going back. So many messages today. Keeping up with them. It's been fantastic. Thank you guys for coming by. It was great having you. Uh, have a great day today. Start your weekend off on the right foot. We'll see you tomorrow at 2 o'clock Eastern time. In the meantime, this is Bruce with Traveling with Bruce saying thanks for joining me today. On May the 26th, 2018. Love the shirts. Love you guys. Have a good one. See you tomorrow too. Bye for now.